For a moment, Sparky thought back to his days as a simple ant, being subjected to human experimentation. He stood alone at the sight of hundreds of millions of his brethren. From the day he saw that sight onwards, he had already accepted his own fate. This extremely tortuous type of pain, knowing that he could perish at any given second, but not knowing when. All he could think about was that this is just how living as an ant goes. It only means that your fate is cheaper than paper. He tried to stand up with great effort as he shivered in pain from lost limbs. In his heart, he still wanted to fight, regardless of whether he could win or not. The fatally injured Blue Mantis saw his friend get up and slowly limp to his certain death, so he couldn't help but interfere. With the last ounce of strength in his obliterated body, he pinned down Sparky. No matter how many times he said that this stubborn friend of his didn't stand a chance at all, he just would not listen. Sparky finally let his tears of grief and frustration show. He already knew that everything Blue Mantis was saying was true. But by charging into battle one last time, at least he wouldn't die in vain. He just wanted to protect this precious place as much as he could. If he ran away now, there would be no difference between that and being dead already. Blue Mantis was beginning to understand what Sparky had been feeling and saying all along. If this was really the case for his dear friend, he had a proposal for Sparky if he wanted to win. Even if it meant dying. All Sparky had to do was eat him. That's kind of sus. He must consume him whole and let him be his newfound power. This morbid proposal naturally shocked the golden mutate ant. He wasn't even sure if he heard him right. Blue Mantis explained that he was about to die anyway. Way back then, his mother ate his father, and then she gave birth to him. His father became her mother's strength, existing within her for the rest of her life. Sparky refused this crazy idea. He did not want to give Blue Mantis such a ridiculous way to go out. He just couldn't accept him suffering such a brutal death. In all Blue Mantis' life, he had run away from every race. But now he realized that he must take control of his life on his own terms. Letting Sparky consume him was his very own choice. His strength would be Sparky's strength, and his speed would be Sparky's speed. This was how he wanted his life to end. Sparky protested heavily that he did not want to do it at all. He just could not, for the life of him, do it to his buddy. Enough friends have died already. He did not want to lose Blue Mantis either. Just a few meters away from their heartfelt discussion, Gulla was making quick work of the mutant rats that crawled up from the underground city. These simple beasts were no match for his transcendent dark energy. This guy is a super effective rat exterminator. Ling Feng could not stomach this sight at all. In his months staying at the gorge, even he had formed quite a close bond with the beasts. He sneaked up on his foe as he raised his blade, full of emotions. Blue Mantis was relentless with his proposition as he tried to convince Sparky to get real. He coughed up blood persistently. Right now, even just talking was extremely painful for him. They had come all this way and they still had not felt the presence of a single comrade. That meant they should consider the possibility that everyone was already dead. So, rather than dying at the hands of a human, he much preferred handing over his life and powers to a brother in arms. Tears started raining down from his eyes as he admitted that he had always thought of Sparky as a good friend. This was the destiny he wanted to choose for himself. After this ordeal, there would be no need for self-blame. Sparky knew that this was the only way for them to survive. He cried and shook with powerlessness once again. He cursed his weakness for putting him in such a painful and sad predicament. With a roar of frustration, grief, and rage, he opened his monstrous jaws wide open. Something remarkable had just formed after the bittersweet goodbye of the two bug friends. Langfing tried to prioritize the lives of the mutant rats more than his own, as he was chased by Gulla's attack for attempting a rescue. He was critically hit as a gush of blood spurted out of his mouth. The mutant rats could not help but cry at the sight of their good friend in such a fatal condition. Gola mocked him as he could not see the point or merit of saving a mere mutant rat. In the end, every single one of them in the group would die by his hands anyway. As he targeted the morning mutant rat, a giant explosion of pure energy swallowed up everything in front of him. His expression turned serious as he felt that something bad had just happened to him. His powerful strike was effectively and effortlessly blocked by the newly transformed golden mutant ant. He came equipped with a blood-red exoskeleton armor, and traits such as his body color now resembled Blue Mantis. Sparky is out here pulling up with a fresh new drip. He's looking like a whole superhero. Gullo was puzzled by the ant in front of him, changing in appearance. It was impossible, as he had seen it almost dying just a few moments ago. He suspected that this might just be another trick or ploy, but its appearance was not the only thing that had changed. Its aura had undoubtedly become stronger as well. Sparky had finally broken through to entry level 9. Gulla quickly determined that this beast in front of him only had the aura of someone entering the ninth level. He, 
A proud transcendent being of the first level, assured himself that the ant in front of him couldn't be his opponent at all. He mocked Sparky continuously, calling him hopelessly stupid for tossing away the opportunity to escape that his friend had painstakingly given him. He boasted that even if Sparky became stronger, an ant still wouldn't be a worthy opponent for him. Sparky simply responded to this relentless mockery by moving so fast that he rushed past Gulla in less than a blink of an eye. This is the part where he should say, nothing personal, kid. Before the genetic transcendent could even process that speed, panic could be seen painted in his eyes as he tried to find Sparky's location behind him. The speed he just witnessed was terrifying. He promptly activated Cloak Impact as his dark cloak spun with a destructive force and a formidable speed of its own. To his surprise, it landed on absolutely nothing at all, as it only dug through the rubble with no sign of Sparky. He had a bad feeling about missing such a supposed surefire strike. Standing proudly like the menace that he is, Sparky had not only dodged a transcendent being's attack, but he was also so fast that he was able to rescue every single mutant rat in the area before Gulla could even detect where he was, low-key looking like a sharper Iron Man. He knew that this lifeless human, Lang Feng, had never been on the side of their divine god tree. But he had also observed that this guy had treated the strange, mutated rats as if they were his own. And now Sparky was returning them to his side. Sparky turned around and faced the humans that he once hated simply for the fact that they were humans. He vowed that he would avenge every single one of these people. Gullah was surprised that in just an instant, the corpses were moved. He mocked Sparky's vow, saying it sounded like he was certain of defeating a transcendent being. He admitted that he had underestimated him earlier, but he wouldn't let him go now. He intended to make this ant regret living. Before he could even finish his evil monologue, a solid punch had already landed squarely on his jaw. That's the best way to shut a villain up. The force was so immense that it sent the vampire flying like a rag doll. Sparky beckoned his opponent to stand up and not fall next time. He had no intention of letting this guy die so easily. With a sinister and fiery aura, he declared that he was going to torture Gulla endlessly. The genetic transcendent couldn't believe that he was getting beaten by a foe who was only at the ninth level. He stood up and refused to give in to Sparky's threats. He prepared himself for their next bout, gloating that his foe was not qualified to issue such intimidation. He dashed towards Sparky with blinding speed, immediately delivering a punch enhanced by his cloak. He laughed maniacally as crimson thorns started to cover his weapon. He slammed it directly into Sparky's thick armor. Ramping up the intensity and speed, he pummeled the ant with pure brute strength. He mocked the ant for being just a mere level 9, thinking that incredible speed was inconsequential against him. In the end, he believed that the most important thing in battle was not speed but power. As he enjoyed his onslaught, a chill ran down his spine as Sparky emerged from the dust with a fierce glare. Once again, he responded with a punch to the face, but this time it was infused with a much denser force. Get some rest, buddy. Gullah promptly lost his balance due to the powerful surprise punch that Sparky had just unleashed. He was starting to resemble a blood-armored battle god as the duel continued. The genetic transcendent was being put at a disadvantage little by little. He was fully aware of this and desperately opted for a different approach. His back bulged grotesquely as a multitude of bats were summoned around him. He controlled his summoned bat to rush and dive through the air like a flying bullet at top speed. It reached Sparky, but this bullet-fast speed was no longer enough to touch him. With a light step to the side, Sparky effortlessly dodged the diving bat. The bat went past him and promptly detonated into an explosive mess. It turns out that Gullah can turn his summoned bats into lethal bombs. This is his unique technique. This is just Batman Gadget's bro. He warned the ant that if he continued to dodge his volatile summoned bats, he would redirect them towards the corpses of the humans that Sparky had gathered, annihilating them even after death. Sparky felt darkness welling up inside him as he decided that he must kill all the bats flying around the area. Gulla thought he had heard wrong, finding this sentiment absolutely ridiculous. He asked the ant just how many bats he thought were in the air right now. Sparky revealed that he had summoned more than 13,000 weapons of mass destruction, and was now going to flatten the place. Those are rookie numbers. Sparky prepared himself as the Fu beckoned his army of blasting summoned bats downward like a rain of TNTs in the form of mammals. He observed the positioning of the bats as he aimed for the most optimal path. A powerful golden aura surrounded his hand, ready for the slaughter that was about to come. One bat was sliced cleanly by his sharp blade, and then another, and then another one. He moved so fast that all he left in his trail were tiny explosions from every bat that he sliced and diced. Gullah was taken aback by the next progression of their duel. 
His summoned bats were going back upwards instead of diving down towards his enemy. Before he could even make sense of what was happening, and why his summoned bomb bats were coming back to him, the little packages of explosives were already ready to burst all at the same time. He was swallowed whole by a massive explosion, helpless and clueless as to what had just happened to his own special technique. He was flung out of the blast with severe injuries, having tanked the brunt of his own special ability. He was not in good condition at all as he tried to stay conscious. He needs some milk. As he was free-falling through the air, a shiver ran down his spine as he felt the unbelievably fast Sparky appear right behind him mid-air. In true Sparky fashion, he sent the guy hurtling through the air like a bat without wings using a single, classic, solid punch. The force was so strong that Gullah resembled a meteor falling and in the cold, hard ground at terminal velocity. He was beaten, bruised, and bleeding as he lay flat on his back on the earth. Sparky was not even remotely done yet, he stomped his clawed foot down on the villain's head, locking him down in a humiliating position. His golden aura had extended all over his body, from head to fists, to blades and down to his sharp clawed toes. Gullah immediately realized that if he got hit here, he would be put into the worst-case scenario. Sparky's lethal strike was already upon him as he started pleading for him to wait and hold on for just a second. Bro was just catching non-stop else, naturally. Sparky did not listen to his desperate appeals at all. An impact that shook the whole mountainous area landed on the desperate Gullah. This strike was so strong that the area of effect reached catastrophic levels. True to his reputation as a genetic transcendent, Gullah had managed to survive the monumental beatings with nothing but humiliating wounds and a desire to run away as far as possible. He coughed intensely as he bled from seemingly every part of his body. He could not believe that he was being brought down to this state so proficiently. He could not fathom just how the Golden Mutant Ant's true strength was suppressing him so hard. Not only was he devastatingly strong, but he was also blindingly fast, and Gullah just could not keep up at all. He was starting to feel genuine fear in the face of such overwhelming power. He simply could not accept this. With frustration and denial, he still had the audacity to mock his opponent for being only at the ninth entry level while he was a first level transcendent. To him, it did not make sense that he could not win at all. What a crybaby. With dissatisfaction and rage, he started gathering power inside his mutated body. His muscles started to grow at an inhuman rate as energy surged. Did Bro just turn into Broly? He grew to the point of resembling a rampaging giant against a tiny ant. He wanted to make Sparky regret ever getting on his bad side with a heavy punch from his gargantuan fist. His punch was so powerful that it caused the entire ground to crumble as if a powerful earthquake had ravaged the mountains. But all this power was useless as Sparky effortlessly evaded the heavy strike. Not only did he dodge the fist, but he also used it as an opportunity to move to the giant Gullah's back where he had free range of options. The colossal vampire quickly turned his body around and unleashed a flurry of lethal punches that could end the battle by itself. He was at his wit's end, as all strategies were thrown out of the window in his desperate attempt to kill Sparky. But all he got was even more frustration as he could not land a hit on the effortlessly evading ant. After finding a hole in the giant's flurry of attacks, Sparky went in for a critical counter right in the body. Unfortunately, it was a trap set by the enemy. His punch not only missed, but his arm was also caught in a lock. Oh snap, he fell for the classic move. Sparky swiftly went into alert mode as he realized the blunder he had just made. Gullah was already celebrating despite his bloody injuries. For once since Sparky had evolved in this battle, he finally grasped a single advantage. He charged forth with his claw as he once again flaunted his status as an extraordinary first-order powerhouse. The rampaging claw hit Sparky directly. Gulla reveled in his guaranteed victory, as a point-blank strike with all his force was simply too strong for enemies to endure. Sparky remembered the words of the divine God Tree to him. From the start, he had a strong hatred towards humanity. But God Tree assured him that not every human is bad, and that perhaps in the future, he would change his opinion of human beings. And at that time, he would have true companions. Sparky was alive, well, and full of vengeful grief in his eyes. Gullah was at a loss for words as this beast had survived his full force at close range. Sparky had completely transformed as his energy turned dark and malevolent. He looked at Gullah, the one who had slaughtered his human companions, the one who had offended his master and tried to take their home away, the one who had brutally killed the only friend that he had. That ain't an ant anymore, bro. The genetic transcendent felt fear like he had never felt before. Sparky deemed his actions unforgivable. A punch full of hatred caved his face in as the two flew at top speed. 
another impact that was even bigger than the ones before decimated the terrain. Gullah was sent halfway into the ground where he belonged, and Sparky stood before him like an armored death god. He truly is built different. Sparky's long and arduous duel with the genetic transcendent has finally come to a close. All of a sudden, his newfound armor started crumbling from within. It was exploding and dematerializing out of nowhere. He immediately pinpointed the possible reason for this. His current body might not be able to bear this amount of power. He had already accepted this fact. After all, since the beginning, this immense power did not belong to him. With this sentiment, his powerful transformation slowly became undone. He walked away from Gullah's body, leaving shards of his evolved armor withering away. He knew that he had finally reached his limit. He had finally avenged his comrades. He walked towards their resting place, and even though it might have been too late to say it now, he took a seat near them and looked at each one individually. It was truly great that he had known them in his short life. He felt at peace, sitting amongst the friends he fought with, with their lives and deaths on the line. The beautiful Thorn, also known as Chi and Chin, was serene as always. Langfeng passed with the mute rats he had grown fond of, and Chi and Tong fell into eternal slumber surrounded by people he cared about. Sparky's final thoughts were an apology to his master. The extravagant armor was peeled away, revealing his original body. His life force was slowly fading away with each passing second. He took his rest. I'm going to need a few hours to recover from this one. Rest in peace. Meanwhile, not far from the battlefield, the hateful woman Yan Lang Ling was still running from a fight she personally deemed impossible to engage in. Grasping at her wounds, she tried her best to flee. That's until someone wearing the same uniform as her stood firmly in her way. Seeing the familiar face of this person shocked the detestable woman. It was none other than the raging Xiao Ling. Finally, some retribution. Yan Ling Ling did not expect to meet anyone at all on this path, let alone Xiao Ling. She blamed her bad luck for this encounter. That's when an idea that could possibly get her out of this pinch came into her mind. She immediately changed her tone to sound panicked and exasperated. She warned Xiao Ling that the situation was not good at all. The genetic troops and mutant beasts were fighting ahead, but most of the beasts had been wiped out. She urged Xiao Ling to swiftly go over to the battlefield to join their forces for reinforcement. Deep inside, she just wanted an opportunity to kill her. But the enraged Xiao Ling was not taking any of her BS. She was only thinking about one thing and one thing only. She asked Yan Lang Ling if that was really the case. And Yan Lang Ling simply tried to run past her awkwardly. She remarked that she was injured. So she planned to go back. Deep inside, this hateful cat girl just wanted to lure Xiao Ling to her death. Before she could even get far, thinking that her acting skills were enough to get away, she suddenly felt a bright and hot feeling in front of her. She was sent to the ground with a sudden explosion from Xiao Ling. She immediately berated her supposed comrade for acting crazy and attacking her out of nowhere. She condescendingly asked her if she was looking to die. But to her surprise, Xiao Ling responded positively. She assured her that she wasn't going to be the one dying today. With hateful eyes, she threatened the injured cat girl that it was she who was about to kick the bucket. Yan Lang Ling tried her innocent act again. She started questioning her if she really wanted to kill a teammate. Xiao Ling was already getting tired of her poor acting as she seriously responded that she really would kill her today. Once she finally got it into her head that this angry woman wasn't kidding at all, she swiftly underwent a shift in demeanor. She stood up and confronted Xiao Ling. Even though she had indeed offended her before, she insisted that now was not the time for fighting. She proposed that they should work together to kill the beasts. This only served to fan the flames of anger in Xiao Ling's heart. She furiously warned her to stop talking nonsense. Yan Lang Ling desperately tried to find an excuse. She asked her if this was because of the doctor, claiming that she had no choice back then. Her reason was that the medicine was too strong, and she could not control it. Before she knew what was happening, the doctor was already dead. Hearing this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Xiao Ling unleashed a forceful punch that caved in Yan Lang Ling's hateful face. This panel is so damn satisfying after everything that had just happened. The impact was so strong that she was sent into a backflip, with just the sheer power of the punch. She slammed down on the ground, complaining that her nose hurt so bad. Xiao Ling might have promised the doctor on his deathbed not to kill her, but she did not say that she wouldn't beat her up. Finally letting go of all pretenses, Yan Lang Ling channeled her wild aura as she planned to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Xiao Ling. She rushed like a wild animal, aiming to start the battle with a swift scratch. Xiao Ling responded with an immediate flame fist counter squarely on her body. At that moment, Yan Lang Ling already knew that she was done for. The flame fist that landed on her critically was enough to put her in miserable pain. 
she needs some milk. Before she could even recover from the shock, Xiao Ling was already continuing to pummel her down with a wide swing kick to the face. She flew and bounced on the ground like a thrown rag doll, and the mountain rocks caught her flying body with a devastating impact. To follow it up, Xiao Ling manifested her rage-filled fire butterfly. She burned her just enough to cause an unbearable amount of pain while being swallowed by a raging inferno. As the flames died down, she rapidly reached out her hand aiming to grab onto Yan Lang Ling's face. She brought her down to the ground while gripping her face with brute force. The wrath in her heart and eyes just could not be extinguished. She resembled the Queen of Death and Fire as she walked menacingly towards Yan Lang Ling. She was already admitting that she was wrong, profusely, and desperately pleading for her life. She insisted that she really was in the wrong and if she let her go just this once, she would repay her later. This girl is so bad and goes she in for her life. Xiao Ling responded to her distressed words by conjuring a blazing fire blade. With a rapid motion, she stabbed Yan Lang Ling's hands firmly into the ground. It was so fast that she could not even react at all. When the feeling of searing pain finally caught up to her, she cried out in agony as she felt the burn of the blazing fire blade. Xiao Ling guaranteed that she would not kill her. But she also wasn't going to let her go easily at all. Imagine being locked up by a fire sword. What a miserable way to be caught. There were countless beasts on this mountain. She assured the terrified Yan Lang Ling that she would not be lonely at all. As Xiao Ling was saying that, two hungry and wild tempest wolves were already just a few meters away from them. As soon as she saw this, Yan Lang Ling's face became filled with horror as she desperately screamed. From horror to rage, she furiously cursed at Xiao Ling. She dared her to die like a mad woman, but the Tempest Wolves were already upon her with their voracious appetite, equipped with sharp teeth and claws. All she could do was scream in agony as the Tempest Wolves feasted on her while she was wide awake. All she could see was the figure of the cold Xiaoling, someone she had crossed one too many times. She became the helpless lunch of the Tempest Wolves. Eat well, boys. In a blazing, fiery forest, Xiaoling is trying to catch her breath while leaning on a tree. A painful headache assaults her out of nowhere, as she tries to find out what is wrong and why she cannot go back to her master. Her body feels powerless, she looks like she has COVID. She might be in dire conditions, but she still tries to brave through it and runs to hurry back to her master's side. On the other side of the battlefield, the primates are trying their hardest to tank the explosive power of human technology. Yuzu's roots are doing the heavy lifting by thwarting and guarding against most of the explosive and fiery attacks. Grass should be weaker than fire, but the god tree is just built different. The Peregrine Falcon faction, along with the Fog Beasts, is doing their best to break through enemy lines and launch an assault on the headquarters. And Gao Yumon is starting to feel the pressure of the formidable forces from the Bayou Gorge as he orders for all the incendiary bombs to be deployed as soon as possible. The artillery vehicles carrying the incendiary bombs do not waste a second as they unleash hell upon the charging beasts. The incendiary bombs in the form of fast-traveling missiles lock onto the massive fob beasts. The vapor monsters are successfully deterred as the bombs blow up directly on their fob bodies. They slowly start evaporating at the high temperature that the incendiary missiles just unleashed. Even some of the flying peregrine falcons are subjected to the destructive heat of the missiles. The battlefield is quickly turning into hell on Earth. Yuzu's roots are fighting valiantly despite being burnt in almost every part. Despite the heat and destruction that the incendiary bombs are capable of, Yuzu's roots are simply in a league of their own as they show evident signs of fright and regeneration. Tanking missiles and healing himself back to full health. This guy is just flexing at this point. The soldiers quickly catch on to the fact that the roots are so full of vitality that the fire is simply not enough to cause serious damage as they heal back up to pristine condition before their eyes. Yan Gao Yuan quickly reassures his soldiers to stay calm and keep bombing. He reasons that the roots need spiritual power to keep repairing themselves. Once they run out of spiritual power, they can capitalize and take them down for good. Also, from their position, it is all but guaranteed that the tree roots would not be able to reach their ace in the hole, the missile launchers. Yuzu's roots continue to be bombarded and engulfed by the flames of the missiles. The missile launchers are doing their jobs magnificently as they continue to rain down hell on the opposition. To try and tip the balance of the battlefield, Three peregrine falcons can be seen rushing through the air, obviously aiming for the missile trucks. Unfortunately, two of the three peregrine falcons are immediately stopped by the awakened soldiers that are waiting to ambush. They have caught up to the fact that these formidable beasts cannot always maintain full strength speed for the whole duration of the war. They formulate and execute a counter perfectly. As two of the peregrine falcons are caught, 
the remaining one boosts its speed even further to fly deep in the back of enemy lines. All it takes is one. Baby. The soldiers' panic can be seen as they lay their eyes on one speeding falcon that resembles a bullet with its speed. It is full of determination and willpower to do the mission that was tasked to it. The valiant singular peregrine falcon dives deep and crashes against the destructive missile trucks of the enemies. It causes a massive explosion that shakes the entire battlefield. The clueless soldiers finally see that behind them, the missile truck they were supposed to protect has already exploded. To add to the chaos of the combat zone, a sudden earthquake is suddenly triggered by something underground. When the dust and explosion smoke gather, everyone knows that something has just come to the surface. It is none other than the transcendent level 1 Emperor Alligator coming in hot as he lunges towards the formation of the soldiers with his massive jaws open. Let's go, it's feeding time, boys. As the massive beast descends upon them, they have no choice but to stand their ground and rain enhanced bullets like madmen. Even under fire from such bullets, the Emperor Alligator is simply unaffected as he looks like an invincible raging monster. At the Psychic Monitoring Station headquarters, the woman in charge finally lays eyes on her arch nemesis. It has been a while since she last saw this Emperor Alligator in the flesh. She swears that this time around, this beast will not be able to run away again. Yen Gao Yuan gets out of his cozy tent to observe this absurd development with his own eyes. This man is under so much stress. The Emperor Alligator that they have been so adamant about hunting is standing before their full military force. The monstrous reptile tanks every single bullet that is launched towards him with rage in his eyes and heart. He lets out a sonic blade that affects every single soldier and military force in the war zone. Awakened soldiers or regular soldiers, no one is spared by his powerful voice. Tanks and troops are mowed down as the Emperor Alligator starts his rush towards the base camp of the force. This looks just like how we played with our toys when we were younger. The humans try their best to stop him. No matter what happens to them, they must keep this monstrosity away from the Supreme Commander. Yan Gao Yuan promptly orders for every infantry and supernatural unit to fall back. He also requests the Air Force to get ready and deploy muscle-paralyzing bombs as fast as they can. The Air Force does not waste a second as their aircraft start dishing out muscle-paralyzing bombs and bullets towards the Emperor Alligator. He takes them with his thick and tough scales like a boss as always. Deep in his thoughts, the Emperor Alligator has already figured out his plan of action. Flames engulf the whole battlefield below as the base camp above the cliffs stays safe. The Supreme Commander of the whole operation, Yan Gao Yuan, tries to look at the state of the war zone for himself at the top of the cliff. He is greeted by the sight of the Emperor Alligator shouting out the God Tree's name in perfect human language. Imagine seeing this in the middle of a war. Just wave the white flag. Yu Zhu's roots move lightning fast in response to the Emperor Alligator's plea. He makes quick work of destroying every single airborne unit of the Air Force, effectively ending their reign of muscle-paralyzing bombs. That's some clutch assists. Call him Nikola Jokic. Taking advantage of the space that his master created for him, the Emperor Alligator jumps and roars into action as he rushes forward. No matter if it's humans, tanks, or whatever else, he does not care for the damage that he is unleashing. He only has one target in mind. Yan Gao Yuan is sent into his fight-or-flight mode as he is now exposed to the enemies. Suddenly, a singular muscle-paralyzing missile has found its way heading towards the Emperor Alligator's eye. Even the supposedly safe cliff that their base camp is located at is engulfed by the explosion of the missile from point-blank range of the Emperor Alligator. Yan Gao Yuan muscles through the impact of the explosion while his secretary tries her best to hold on for her life. You must see if the Emperor Alligator is neutralized with his own eyes. Contrary to what he was expecting, a massive figure with a gaze that would make anyone freeze greets him. The Emperor Alligator is uninjured by the missile that he just tanked directly. He has reached his destination and asks if this man in front of him is the master of the soldiers. Yan Gao Yumon realizes that he is now at the mercy of a bloodthirsty beast with its human-sized teeth aiming at him. The Emperor Alligator judges that if this single human die, everything ends right here and right now. He scoops the whole side of the cliff that the man is standing on as he intends to end this war. Supreme Commander on the rocks. What a lunch. Yan Gao Yuan takes his stance refusing to surrender. He declares that they cannot lose here. He orders his troops to fire directly into the beast's open jaw. The Emperor Alligator quite literally eats a bunch of explosives. The remaining Air Force units in the air also take their revenge as they rain down hellfire on the vulnerable Emperor Alligator. Once again, he is being swallowed up by the unrelenting sea of fire from humanity's bombardment. These guys just won't give up. Back in humanity's world leader headquarters, the fearsome spiritual missile they had been developing is finally ready. 
This is humanity's last resort when push comes to shove. If even the powerful General Lee can't handle the mutant beast of Bayou Gorge, then only God knows what will happen. Humanity is so fast when it comes to making weapons of mass destruction, man. The commander of the outpost is getting antsy as he asks for updates regarding General Lee's side. It seems like there has been no news from their ace for the last hour or so. Back in the heart of the battlefield, General Lee is continuously being beaten by Yuzu. With just one powerful route, he manages to thwart the Federation's strongest general with no problems at all. He asserts to the powerful soldier that he could easily beat him. This general refused to listen to the words of Yuzu. He insists that he is not the type of person to back down. He believes that he will not lose. Seeing the willpower of the man, Yuzu decides that before ending his life, he will show him his real strength. General Lee is taken aback by this statement. He did not expect that after the intense beating he had just experienced, his opponent wasn't using his full power the whole time. This is not even my final form. With a powerful roar, Yuzu pushes his spiritual power to the limit. The entirety of the gorge starts crumbling just from the pressure he is exerting. The general cannot believe that this is real spiritual power coming from a tree. As the terrain begins to crumble, Yuzu's red vines start going wild all over the place. General Lee looks powerless in front of such an impressive display of might. He braces himself for impact as he looks at the figure of Yuzu's empowered form. He was already strong, and now he's even stronger. If humanity cannot kill him now, General Lee thinks that he will surely become a menace in the future. Rather, he was living peacefully. You guys are the ones that's turning him into a menace to society. He takes out a black pill that he really did not want to resort to. He does not want to take this pill at all costs, but seeing the god tree power up, he does not have a choice. He bites down on the black pill. He must destroy the tree in front of him before the medicine wears off. He refers to use you as the demon tree. Even if he must risk his life, he vows to never let him live. He pledges that he will bury him along with the wild beasts right here on this very mountain. He starts undergoing a fearsome transformation. His skin turns to a darker hue as his strength rapidly increases, while his health rapidly declines. He finally achieves the strength of a mid-third level spiritual power of 680,000 as his lifespan decreases to 10 hours. I respect the commitment. He's going up against the enraged Yuzu with his second level spiritual power of 490,000 and a lifespan of 200 years. Yuzu activates Landslide, spawning countless earth spikes on the ground between him and the general. The general quickly utilizes his new boosted strength and speed as he jumps on each earth spike with ease. He wants to distance himself from the feral general for a long distance battle, but this man is not going to let him get what he wants. The general uses the debris as his footing to propel himself and get close to the target. He conjures up a blade made up of his pure enhanced spiritual energy. He slashes the blade down with mighty speed and force. It meets Yuzu's willow blade and root. The two colossal forces clash heavily. The whole terrain in the gorge suffers the brunt of the impact from the collision. General Lee finally gets close to Yuzu for the first time in their whole fight. Before he can even make his move, Yuzu already summons an earth punch that almost knocks the empowered general's head off. Bro really gave him that full metal alchemist punch. He sends him flying towards the mountains, but the force of the punch is so powerful that it is not enough to stop his momentum. Yuzu proceeds to chase the flying general down with his powerful roots. As soon as the roots surround and grip onto the general, dozens of sharp slashes are suddenly unleashed. Yuzu screams in shock and pain as his roots are sliced and diced. General Lee just activated one of his most powerful abilities, the 10,000 Swords. After getting out of the root binding, he does not slow down his charge at all. He turns his 10,000 Swords towards Yuzu himself. And the blades made up a pure spiritual energy lunge directly towards him. In response to this attempt, Yuzu picks up the whole mountainous terrain and lifts it up using his roots. General Lee catches on to what he is about to do but is too late. The whole concrete arch of the mountain is bashed against the small body of a human. He ate those rocks like breakfast, bro. To cap the whole combo off, Yuzu lets the willow leaf flying knives loose. The verdant green blades slice up everything in their path towards the general. Meanwhile, Xiaoling is still rushing through the forest. She grits her teeth as she desperately tries to go to her master's side. Back at the president's office, a new battle report from the front lines has finally arrived. They are informed that the Emperor Alligator attacked the headquarters of the Supreme Commander himself. The fate of Yan Gao Yuan is unknown at the current moment. The director of the Supernatural Unit is temporarily taking over the command of the operation for now. With desperation and anxiety in his eyes, the commander of the outpost asks if the thing is ready yet. 
He is informed that it is indeed ready. When General Lee retreats, they can launch the terrifying spiritual missile directly. Of course, the nuke is always the final answer. The only problem they have is that after stepping into the depths of the mountain, they had lost all connection to the general. All they know is that he seems to be in a fight with the opponent's boss. After an intense exchange of blows, Yu Ziyu simply regenerates his damages. General Lee knows that continuing to fight an opponent that's essentially unkillable will only waste time and strength. He simulates the power of the black pill as his strength starts to climb up once again. He deems it necessary to act fast and destroy the monster's core before it's too late. Even his speed starts to drastically improve as his lifespan is reduced to a mere five hours. With an evidently more powerful spiritual energy blade in his hand, he has finally reached the threshold for the transcendent third level. Yuzu's core is being targeted by such a catastrophic level of power. The power is so extreme that the aftershock of the direct impact causes the whole Bayou Gorge to tremble. Every single fiber of General Lee's being is behind that magnificent slash. But Yu Ziyu's round core figure is starting to emerge from the aftermath once again. General Lee is taken aback by such an unexpected development. Yu Ziyu's round core resembles a demonic being as he finally tastes the power of the third level transcendent. Our boy is looking a little too evil here. General Lee's current spiritual strength is at the third transcendent level. Yet, after unleashing his killing blow, he had only managed to leave a crack on the god tree's core. Yu Ziyu was beginning to show signs of madness from the intensity of the fight. From the general's perspective, many people were relying on him to protect them, so he couldn't afford to lose. He must keep fighting for their sake. For Yu Ziyu, these words coming out of the general's mouth were nothing but nonsense. He combined his branches to form a fearsome drill that struck the opponent directly on the body. He asked the general if his people deserved to die. And by that logic, were human lives the only valuable ones? The general spat out blood as his body was ravaged by the branch attack. He continued, stating that humans were the ones who had been sending hunters to harass them. And now, they had gathered an army for annihilation. General Lee answered that this was necessary for the protection of humanity. This sentiment finally broke Yu Ziyu. It felt like a big joke, like this man was spitting on his face. They had never invaded a single village. They had never touched any cities. Just because humans were afraid of them for no reason at all, they were trying to erase their existence altogether. He felt levels of anger that he had never felt before. Who the hell gave humanity the authority to do whatever they wanted? General Lee could not respond to the stinging words of the God Tree. When you're fighting the hero and his words are starting to make sense, you're the bad guy. That's when someone contacted him from the earpiece he was wearing. The signal finally went through, and he could finally hear the instructions from the president's office. He was informed that he had exceeded the battle time and needed to leave the area immediately. They had finally decided to launch the spiritual missiles. He needed to move at least 10 kilometers away from his current location. These instructions struck him like lightning, and he was immediately conflicted. In the end, he replied to the people on the other side of the earpiece, refusing to pull out of the blast site. This decision caught the commander of the outpost off guard. Even Yu Ziyu was stunned. For the general, he absolutely refused to admit that as a transcendent third stage, he was inferior to a second stage beast. He had already made up his mind that he must defeat it. This dude is going to die for his ego and pride. The commander of the outpost, Lo Zhao, got on the microphone to address his brother personally. He stated that there was so much more that General Li needed to do, so they couldn't lose him yet. He sincerely urged him to come back. The words from this man had a great effect on the general. One word from daddy asking him to come home made this dude fold. Where's the tough guy talk, buddy? He informed Yu Ziyu that it seemed like he didn't need to fight anymore, confusing the god tree. He continued to inform him that a missile carrying the crystallized wisdom of humanity would soon come and destroy this place. This was a level of destruction that no one could stop, no matter what. From the very beginning, his mission was to uncover the mastermind behind the scenes, destroy them, and finally take back control of the mountains. His prerequisite was to defeat the boss within the time frame of one hour. And as we can see, if there exists a beast that cannot be killed by a third level transcendent within an hour, this is what happens. If they were to continue fighting, both would be defeated due to sheer exhaustion. After all, humanity did not want to resort to using the spiritual missile either. The spiritual power of that weapon of mass destruction was close to one million. It was a prototype missile that was developed with the full efforts of the government. Although the radiation was not as extreme as nuclear weapons, this area would undoubtedly and inevitably become one big radiation zone. All the blood should just for a radioactive wasteland. Congratulations, humanity. They originally intended to expand the area for human activities, 
but now it seemed like they had ended up hurting themselves in the process as well. They were suffering losses instead of gaining. This was essentially their last card. He insulted the god tree one last time before fleeing. He deemed that his inability to move was his biggest failure, and that he should think about how to survive this one. Yuzu seethed in anger as he knew that he was truly helpless in this situation. The spiritual missile was already heading for him with unprecedented speed and accuracy. It was traveling amongst the woods as it locked onto its primary target. Yuzu desperately called out to every beast in his mountain to come back. The roots that were once engaged in combat in various areas of the battlefield started to retract back onto the heart of the gorge. The ballistic spiritual missile was already upon him. With every root and branch activated, Yuzu did not intend to die here. The fleeing general saw the missile hurtling through the air, and Yuzu saw it heading straight for his core. He tried to block it with every single one of his vigorous roots, but he already knew that this would be insufficient. The head of the missile drilled through the tough roots and decimated its way all the way to the other side. It finally landed on its final target head-on. It dug deep right into the god tree, Yuzu's core, I'm literally screaming internally. Just like that, a spiritual missile ravaged him from the core right through every single part of his colossal body. He even dug deep downwards to the underground city, until it finally exploded and destroyed the whole Bayou Gorge from the underground up. The only thought in Yuzu's mind was his words for the citizens of his mountain, that he promised to protect them all, that he would not let them die. The heartfelt words that he vowed to everybody. He promised them to survive together in this little place that they could call home. The mountains had finally been erased from the map. The only thing visible from afar was a gargantuan explosion. A culmination of human progress in its purest and most destructive form. Ain't no way, bro. The massive blast swallowed everything up within a radius of 10 kilometers from the heart of Bayou Gorge. Why does that explosion look like something else, though? Beasts and plant life alike were annihilated in just a second. The rushing Shaoling was even caught up in the pressurized air coming from the blast. From underground to the skies, the spiritual missile reigned supreme all over the mountains. The soldiers at the outskirts of the mountain washed in relief as the signal for the end of the war lit up the sky. The missile had finally been launched, and the hard part for them was finally over. The head of the Federation was quickly updated regarding the triumphant hit of the missile. The mission had finally succeeded. Outside the blast radius, General Lee finally reverted to his normal, albeit injured, form. He coughed up blood as the injuries from his fight and his consumption of the black pill had left him in rough condition. That's when a group of awakened soldiers saw him struggling to stand up while supporting himself with a rock. These concerned soldiers were there to pick him up. As the majority of the troops had already begun to retreat, they had to hurry back as well. Mr. Running Away from Battle even has an entourage to take him home. Upon hearing this, General Lee quickly demanded an update on the situation in their war zone. It turned out that as the army fought against the wild beasts of the mountains, they had managed to kill those they could and flood from those that were too strong to fight. The cleanup had almost been completed as well. The biggest threat to humanity and the most troublesome monster they faced was none other than the Emperor Alligator. They had taken down nearly every tank, missile launcher, and attack helicopter they had. By its sheer strength and willpower alone, the Emperor Alligator had mowed down and killed 10,000 soldiers, including the Supreme Commanding Officer, Yan Gao Yuan. They had to use thousands of missiles to finally kill it in the end. It was a Giga Chad until the end. Rest in peace, brother. Now that the last boss in the mountains had been killed by the headquarters missile with the help of their idol, General Lee, there were no more powerful beasts in the mountains. The spiritual value in Bayou Gorge had dropped from its original 300,000 to only 1,000. The headquarters had also issued the retreat order. After a barrage of updates, a familiar figure could be seen standing menacingly not far from the group of awakened soldiers. It was none other than Xiaoling, slowly making her way towards the group of soldiers. She had been crying her heart out as she mourned her master, whom she could no longer sense. She could no longer feel the strong connection they had established. It had been severed. The general and the soldiers were baffled by her emotions and words. Xiao Ling released her unrestrained fiery aura as she continued to blame the soldiers in front of her. She knew that they had done this with their own hands. One soldier tried to get in her face to demand that she retract her aggressive spiritual energy. This intrusion was met with a strong punch squarely in the face. Go to sleep, buddy. The group was alerted as one of their own falls in a single strike. Xiao Ling did not retract her aura, and it only grew stronger. With a blazing hot spiritual energy, she coldly confessed that the tree that humanity had just killed was none other than her master. This revelation was a big surprise, even to General Lee. My face when the imposter among us was revealed. 
The awakened soldiers did not waste any more breath as one of them charged with a sharp claw, ready to land a killing blow on her. They had finally found out who the traitor in their own military was all along. Xiao Ling stared coldly at the man charging towards her. In response to the man's claw, she summoned the spirit of the transcendent centipede to swiftly deal with him. The centipede constricted and bound the man until his last breath. Seeing this, the general finally connected the dots as to why the silver centipede in their custody had suddenly died. and had been absorbed by Xiao Ling. The group of awakened soldiers immediately took up their positions as they readied themselves to take Xiao Ling down. But the general promptly stopped them in their tracks. He confidently declared that he would be the one to do it. He warned the rest of the troops that they would only serve as a hindrance to him. Suddenly, he's the man again. This guy is a clown. Xiao Ling executed a lightning-fast rush with her flames locked and loaded, charging towards the general. This clash resulted in a massive burning explosion, ultimately sending someone flying through the ground at incredible speeds, bouncing like a ragdoll. Naturally, Xiao Ling was at a disadvantage as she was too weak compared to the formidable general. He emerged from the smoke and started to berate her for her actions. He insisted that he took her in as a disciple earlier to keep her close and monitor her. He had really hoped that she was not the mole they were looking for. With evil in his eyes and aura, he expressed that he felt heartbroken by this development. He saw Xia Ling as such a promising person. In response, she got up and activated her newfound power-up, the ability called Spiritual Empress. The general brandished his blade made of pure spiritual energy. He refused to believe that someone at the first level of transcendence did not stand a chance against him at all. With raging flame butterflies surrounding her, she rushed towards the man, challenging him to a duel of strength. The two transcendent beings clashed with full force, destroying everything in their path. With a final shout, General Li's blade managed to slash through the rampaging flames of Xiao Ling. An explosion of light and rubble could be seen from miles away. General Li stood like a blade-mielding deity while Xiao Ling struggled to stay on her feet, injured and bleeding from tanking such a formidable strike. He implored her to stop fighting, as there was no way she could defeat him. If they kept on like this, she would undoubtedly die. Xiao Ling looked at him with cold eyes as blood dripped from her wounds. Seeing her empty eyes and that cold gaze, he finally knew that she was already gone. She tried to conjure up another batch of flame butterflies, but she quickly extinguished them as she no longer had enough spiritual energy. He had enough of this exchange as he let out another slash, sending her flying. He promised that if she would just come with him, he would not hold grudges about her past. He would even raise her like his own daughter. That's a hard pass even for me. You're a creep, bro. This sentiment only served to anger Xiao Ling even more as she implored him to never talk to her like that. The general gritted his teeth and finally decided that she would die right there and right now. But as he was about to bring down his spiritual blade towards her, a duo of Tempest Wolves suddenly appeared out of nowhere. They took him by surprise and latched their jaws onto the general's body. Those are some good boys right there. In a dark and endless void, Yu Zhu's consciousness and core can be seen floating in the abyss. It was so incredibly dark that he could not see anything at all. Suddenly, everything that had happened finally hit him. White Tiger died. Bald Head died. Gold Silk Monkey died. And the War Armor Boar also died. Death had been all around him in just the past few hours. Oh man, those are the death flowers from every anime ever. He also remembered that Sparky had passed. Almost everyone he cherished had their lives snuffed out. His thoughts wandered back to when he first reincarnated as a tree. He wondered if he was going back to being alone once again. He remembered a bright smile and a lively voice calling him dad. Suddenly, the endless dark abyss started to light up little by little. He wondered who it was that he was remembering, but it was none other than the precious Xiaoqing. The light continued to grow, and soon it encompassed every inch of the empty void. Yu Zhu's consciousness had been awakened once again. Do it for her, big dog. Back in the duel happening on the outskirts of the mountains, the two Tempest Wolves were trying their hardest to latch onto and hold onto the powerful general with all their might. He found it unbelievable that these beasts were running out to save Xiao Ling. With a casual and angry swipe of his hands, he sent the two beasts flying away with heavy injuries. One of the Tempest Wolves was wounded to the point of losing consciousness as it bled out. Xiao Ling immediately rushed to the side of the Tempest Wolf to examine its condition. She lamented that at that time back then, she could not protect the beast. This time around, she pleaded to the gods for everyone to live on and survive. As the Tempest Wolf closed its eyes and breathed its last breath, Xiao Ling finally broke down as tears uncontrollably rained down from her once lifeless eyes. 
She could not take the agony of everyone that she cared about passing away in such a short amount of time. The Tempest Wolves, Sparky, White Tiger, the Peregrine Falcons, Bald Head, and her master himself. It finally sunk in for her that everyone was gone. General Lee stood before her with fury and bites from the Tempest Wolves all over his body. The group of awakened soldiers accompanied him from behind. He assessed that his body's functions were quickly deteriorating more and more as time went by. She questioned him if they truly had to erase everything. Just because humans could not solve the problem effectively, they resorted to such extreme measures. He looked at her meaningfully as she bawled her eyes out in grief. She asked them if there must have been other ways, they could have ended all of this. She resented that humans always resorted to war as if it would solve everything. She asked the general and all the soldiers around her a simple question. She genuinely asked them if it was the beast's fault for simply being alive and living. This question elicited a complex reaction from the general. At first, he was taken aback, but he regained his composure as anger welled up inside him. He yelled at her to shut her mouth. This man is willing to die on such a messed up hill. He justified his and everyone's actions, stating that they were just a bunch of beasts that spoke human language. They did not do what humans did. They could not guarantee that these beasts wouldn't attack human cities. No, in his viewpoint, even if there was a slim possibility of an attack, they wouldn't let it have any chance of ever happening. The awakened soldiers and the general surrounded Xiao Ling as they tried to justify their actions collectively. They tried to convince themselves that they were not in the wrong while teaming up on an injured woman. Let the scene speak for itself. General Lee conjured up another spiritual blade as he intended to send her to accompany the beasts they had killed. Xiao Ling at this point was broken beyond saving from the grief and powerlessness that she was feeling. He was already within killing distance as he intended to end the war right there and then. Xiao Ling's eyes looked lifeless already. She had given up all hope as she just stared at the charging, murderous general with no reaction whatsoever. That's just really sad, man. Suddenly, a familiar tree with burned roots and trunk came flying in from out of nowhere. The round core that Xiao Ling was all too familiar with was now surrounded by molten material that burned brightly and ruthlessly. The soldiers had no idea what was happening, but all of them knew in their hearts that this was not good news at all. General Lee was the only one feeling true dread and fear as he carefully watched the tree flying towards their direction. Xiao Ling was also taken aback by such a bizarre twist of fate. The god tree, Yu Ziyu, finally landed on the battlefield with his new and fiery look. He cemented his roots onto the ground as the burning fire continued to blaze around his core. Let's freaking go. He looks like Ghost Rider right now. The soldiers tried to brace themselves for the impact, but that was the least of their concerns. The powerful roots of the god tree were already on the move, and the targets were unaware. General Lee tried to scream and warn everyone that this was the boss of the mountain. But his voice was drowned out by a roar that was so loud and frightening. It engulfed everyone within the vicinity with terror upon hearing it. It was as if a new life was lit up inside Xiao Ling's heart as she tearfully called out to her master whom she thought had passed. With a deafening and threatening roar, he warned the humans in front of him to get away from his precious Xiao Ling. With a sudden sweep of his roots, the area was flattened along with a decent chunk of awakened soldiers. The surrounding troops had not even processed what was happening and what this blazing creature in front of them was. General Li shouted at the god tree, frustrated and infuriated at the tenacity of this monster. Looking at his status, all of his branches had been damaged, nine of his tree roots were impaired, and even his regeneration ability had been disabled. He had been warned that his whole system would collapse soon. It would break down in exactly 10 minutes from now. The awakened soldiers tried to gain their composure and got into their respective positions to rush at the god tree all at once and try to go for the kill. General Lee panicked at this charge as he hurriedly warned them not to go. He assured them that all of them combined would be no match against such an opponent. The raging Yu Ziyu did not intend to leave a single one of these soldiers alive. His ferocity took over as the burning flames of his core grew even more. He stretched out his roots, eliminating the charging soldiers in less than a second. He continued to scream in rage and agony as his roots traveled from one end of his kill zone to another, claiming the lives of soldiers with maximum efficiency. With their comrades dying left and right from charging forward, the soldiers on the ground quickly realized that this was way above their pay grade. Some of them were too stunned to even step forward, but the roots took the chance to bring the action to them. Another soldier got his head crushed as the roots advanced forward. Where's your head, big dog? The only thing on Yu Ziyu's mind was to kill and kill. All these humans must die. His rampage was so chaotic that some of the charging soldiers were even burned by his flaming core. Even Xiao Ling found it hard to stay safe amidst the uncontrollable rampage of her master. 
General Li finally acted and jumped towards the god tree with his spiritual blade in hand. His longevity was also quickly dwindling down. He had 57 minutes of lifespan remaining. This would truly be their final fight. The general was up against Yu Ziyu's 9 minutes and 10 seconds of longevity remaining. General Li, with his trusty spiritual blade in hand, rushed towards the rampaging and smoldering monster that is the god tree. Even with a massive damage at the upper part of his round core, Yu Ziyu is not going to let that crack get in his way. Just as he was preparing a strike in response to the charging general, he was suddenly caught off guard with the speed of the spiritual blade. It landed squarely on his core, cracking and breaking off shards even more. After tanking that missile impact from just a few moments ago, the general believes that there's no way that the god tree could beat him anymore. He charged once more with the intent to kill. The roots immediately halted his charge and dragged him away effortlessly. Contrary to his belief, the roots themselves are enough to stop his momentum and injure him gravely. It held on to him like he owes it money. No matter how hard he tried to free himself, the root was unmovable. Yu Ziyu started to burn even more brightly as his lifespan slowly ticks away. It was as if he was going insane as he reaffirmed that this mountain of theirs is where everyone lives. Xiao Ling tried to get closer to her master but the heat and spiritual pressure he was emitting was far too hostile and wild. General Li is having a hard time breathing as he was being slowly choked to death by the roots. That's when the god tree jumped off the floor and took flight like a burning rocket ship taking off. He jumped all throughout the mountains, covering staggering amounts of distance as he traversed his home. He did this insane way of traveling from one point to another while dragging the struggling General Li by his neck. Bro was riding a most deadly roller coaster out there against his will. The general had a bad feeling as he finally ascertained where Yu Ziyu was truly heading into. Looking down from a distance, the central battlefield had finally calmed down as the fires of battles slowly dwindled away. Countless casualties on both sides littered the ground as the historic war had finally ended. The soldiers gathered to confirm that targets have been verified as out of commission. In front of the primate beast corpses, they celebrated that finally, everything has been cleaned. They gathered around the emperor alligator. This beast in particular was an insane force of nature. Every single one of them took a huge sigh of relief when they confirmed that it has finally died. Taking the tally of casualties on their side, they could not help but feel conflicted at their supposed victory. The super being team is now only left with around 30 people. Are you sure about that number? The highest ranking soldier alive took charge as he ordered his troops to count their people and check the number of bullets. In his mind, he was quietly celebrating. Since the Supreme Commander, Yan Gao Yuan had died, he is now the person in charge of everyone. He just needs to lead the soldiers to clean up the mountains. After some light work, all the credit will be his for the taking. With a commanding voice, he instructed everyone to prepare heading deep into the mountain. He roused them to start the mission to kill all the remaining weak beasts. That's when the commanding officer got flattened to the ground by massive roots that came out of nowhere. The soldiers were caught off guard as the blood and guts of their acting leader was spilled and showered all around them. The flaming horror at the core of the god tree served as a reminder to the soldiers that this creature is not something that they can mess with. Yu Ziyu turned his attention to the surprised soldiers and all he can see was hateful humans. He turned his roots into a killing machine as he goes on the second part of his savage massacre. The soldiers were so frightened by this development that they forgot to even raise their weapons. They would have accomplished nothing anyways. The roots of the god tree decimated its way through the hordes of humans in the battlefield. Even the heavy-duty tanks looked like a toy being flung onto the air as the humans watched helplessly. One awakened soldier tried to take charge as he tried to gather the remaining forces. He knows that they are no match for this type of monster. He ordered for everyone to retreat but all he got was his head crushed away from his body. Yu Ziyu cemented his roots even further into the ground of the bloody war zone. Every single person looked in horror of the strength that they are witnessing in front of their eyes. He resembled a demonic entity as he alters the terrain of the site. With rage-filled voice, he yelled at the humans to leave his territory forever and to never ever come back. The struggling General Li, trapped in the grass of the roots managed to let out a word of warning to his troops. He told them to run. But Yu Ziyu does not intend to let any one of these people ever come back here permanently. After that sentiment, he went on an unholy slaughter. When Xiao Ling caught up to her master, all she saw was a terrain that was terraformed into an unrecognizable mess. In the middle of the war zone was his master's blazing figure holding the lifeless body of General Li with his arms cut off. He turned the general into a mannequin. At the second monitoring station headquarters, the woman in charge watched the horrors of the god tree going on an unrestrained carnage. Every single human in the vicinity was wiped out. 